Okay guys, back from Collie. Um, there's a few things we need to check out now that we're back. We'll pull the oil out and the filter and we'll replace them. Check the oil, make sure everything's fine in there. We will check the clutch, so see how much damage we've done to the clutch. I think it was an oil related issue, but we'll check to see where their leaks come from and, and we'll pull it out and make sure that it doesn't need to go back to MPC to get a freshen up. Um, we need to lift the suspension up at the front and just check both tyres and see what damage is done. Obviously the front left is fingered, so that'll need to be replaced, but we'll have a look to see um, the damage on the right hand side. We'll lift that up and check for clearance. Um, we'll also check for anything else that might be a result of the hard driving that we had. We had obviously a lot of fun, but with a lot of fun means the car was put under enormous pressure. So we want to just make sure there's nothing loose, so we'll do a bolt check. So stay with us, we'll get into it. So before we do anything, we need to make sure that we check the, the current ride height. So in this instance, I'm going to just go from the, the guard down to the floor because we know he's gonna go into the same spot. So I'm gonna measure that right now. All right, 630 mil on the nose. 635 mil. So we know that once we adjust the height, so we're gonna try maybe go up 15 or 20 mil, we'll be able to check against that. Obviously we'll measure off the shock, but we'll know once it's all settled exactly where it's gonna finish up. Right, so we've got the damage from the passenger front tire. And as you can see, the canvas is definitely showing. So this one's fingered. That flat spot I believe is from another track day. So just by chance, it kind of looks like that one spot seemed to be rubbing in the same location. This one here seems to be okay. So whether the right hand side's a little bit lower, but if you come across here, we can see where it's been rubbing here, and then up on top here. So we've got rub marks up here, rub marks inside here. We can't clearance that, so I'll just take you across to the other side. And this is where most of it was just on this spot here. You can see it's worn away, all the paint right up there. So obviously man, when we're turning, this looks like it might need a bit more clearancing here. And at the front, it's okay. So we'll see if we can, we can clearance it a little bit, mostly just lift it up. So we've got a bit of an oil leak under here. This has already been cleaned up at the track which looks to be coming from the oil return and or the oil pan gasket. <clears throat> My thoughts are that oil was made it through into the clutch and that's what's caused the slip. Last time we had an issue with it, it was the rear main. It could be the rear main as well again, hopefully not, but we'll pull it out, we'll check it and clean it and see how much damage is done and uh and the result of that and if we need to send it back over to the boys at mpc to to give it a bit of a freshen up because the poor things had quite a bit of an abuse
All right, the moment we've been waiting for. The MPC clutch, it's come out. We know we've been giving it a hard time. I'll just run it through you. There's been a bit of heat go through the poor thing. You can see around here, it's definitely gotten hot, but it is doing its job. Um, Share a few sections. There's no damage to the plates. They're still worn, There's plenty of material left on it. But you know, this thing's already been given a tough task. It is a light car, um, but it is that being asked to do a lot of stuff. We've given it a bit of abuse. And to be honest, it's been really good. We just think this issue with the, cl the clutch pedal is ca causing a lot of uh, problems. So we'll clean this up. Um, I was speaking to the boys at NPC. They're happy with it. We'll clean it up um, with thinners. Make sure there's no residue at all left over because that's very important. There's no contaminants. Then we will chuck it back into the car. We'll fix the pedal assembly. And we'll take it from there. So we've had the clutch out, we've had a close look at it. Yes, it's getting some heat in it, but it seems to be doing a great job. So I think the pressure issue is further down the line. It might be a clutch pedal, we'll look at that later. But for now, we're gonna put the clutch back in. We're gonna double check the measurement between the throw up bearing and the clutch. So we'll put it together first, we're gonna clean it. So because we don't want any contaminants on it, we're gonna make sure we clean it down with thinners. Make sure that it's super clean, there's not a drop on it and then we can put it back together and start taking our measurements. Make sure your, your rag's nice and clean. And what we're gonna do, is get some thinners on it. And give it a good rub. We get all of it off. Because any little piece of Oil, grease, residue is, is going to cause some slippage for our new clutch. Well, our old clutch, just going back in I should say. Obviously the most important parts are making sure that we keep the surface clean. So I'll go through now and I'll do piece by piece and then we'll put it together. Okay, clutch is done. We've given this a good clean, but uh, we're gonna just assemble it now. But as we do it, I like to clean it again as I start to assemble it, just because there's no such thing as too clean when you're putting the clutches back together. It has to be as clean as physically possible. So I'll have the clutch sitting next to the car and piece by piece we'll put it together and I'll give everything another clean as we put it back on. All right guys, the clutch is on. We've got the aligning tool in there, making sure that that's got plenty of play and that's central. We've just nipped these up now, but we're gonna take them up slowly, um, doing the opposites. Um, four passes on this, up to 54 foot-pounds, and then we're good to go. All right, first pass is done, which was 12 newton meters. So we're just gonna check this now. So it's sliding in and out nice and easy, which means that when our gearbox goes on, our input shaft is gonna go straight in and hug that, that um, speaker bearing inside. So the clutch is in, um, we've cleaned it thoroughly. We've put it back together, everything. We've checked the crush measurements and that's ready to go, everything's assembled back together. Now we're gonna work on the, the clutch pedal. So this is the setup that was originally done. So we had this, uh, this master cylinder was relocated to here, and it was on a bit of a pivoting spring, we weren't happy with that. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna modify this side so we can allow for an aftermarket cylinder, um, because obviously the LS motor's in our way in the engine bay. So. The master cylinder that we've chosen, Wilwood. Um, it's got a remote reservoir because obviously it was very difficult to fill up under the dash before, so we can remote mount that. 
And um, what we're going to do, as I've said, I've, I've started um, shaving down that, if you can see that, on either side. I've got to cut that right back so they're flush both sides to fit this in. We're going to remove this. There was a spring up here. Remove this, take this out of the way, and this is going to go in and fit through there. So you can obviously see still a bit to cut back, um, but we'll, uh, we'll take this bracket out. We'll plate inside here, set the depth, and then we'll connect it to the, uh, the piv pivot arm. And then we'll have a nice smooth transitioning clutch without the, uh, the, the movement of the, the push rod. And then we're gonna have to modify the line to go back to the clutch where obviously it was coming inside. Now it's gonna be in the engine bay. I, I So as you can see with the remote reservoir, which I've taped up so nothing can get in it, this, this plate here is in our way. So that's going to work in there. We'll have to cut this push rod down and make it fit. Um, but this is going to be right back here, which means the reservoir uh, outlet, the tube to the reservoir is going to be in the way with this. So we'll move this. So we'll cut this out, we'll plate it. And then we'll be able to get that bolt, that tube up to uh, to the reservoir, which I'll decide later where I'm going to mount it. So this this rod is is far too long for our application. We've really got to cut it, cut it down. So I'll take the rod out. We'll cut it carefully down, and we'll put that back together. So I'll try to shorten this as much as possible, so we can have as much adjustment as we can. So we've got the uh, the master cylinder mounted. Made a custom bracket in there. We've shortened the push rod and moved this hole. Let's see if I can give you a better view. We've drilled another hole in here. We've just got to shorten this up as much as possible. All we're going to do now is uh, we'll put this fitting in properly, we'll mount it, and then we'll move on to the clutch line and get that sorted. So here's where I've mounted the remote reservoir. Originally it was under the dash, which was an absolute prick to get to. Um, this, this here, I'll adjust it later. It came with a plastic bracket, so for convenience sake, that's where we decided to put it originally. But obviously, either way, very easy to fill up. That line runs in through the firewall to the master in there. I've been speaking with the guys at Haltech, so um, I'm pretty excited to tell you guys, but the, so we've obviously got the Elite 2500 in here. Great computer, very happy with Haltech. But one of the issues that we've had since day one is that there's been no power steering because the power steering ECU gets its information from the factory ECU and through the CAN bus. So I spoke to the guys at Haltech, they've helped me out. Um, hopefully this release will be available for everyone that's got these conversions because they are becoming more and more popular. Not just LSs, but 2Js, um, whatever you've got. The boys at Haltech have got the, because we've, we've removed the ABS module. The ABS module sends the speed signal over the CAN bus and the ECU for the power steering picks that up. So because we don't have that anymore, the ECU just didn't know what the speed of the, the car was going and therefore couldn't give power steering feedback and, and know what how much to give back. So um, Haltech have adjusted it, they've gone in, they've let uh, the, the cherry sensors that I've got front and rear send the information through the uh, Elite, out through the CAN bus, and it's now picking up. So I'll just show you quite quickly right now this is how hard it is to push the steering wheel standard. Been very difficult. And once we get a bit of power into it, you'll see it start to, look at that. So much easier. So we'll test this out real soon. Um, hopefully the idea is at low speeds or no speeds like this, we've got the power assist. We've just changed the tyres down to a 265, but 265, 295, they're sticky tyres. They're very difficult to drive in the in the car park and, and at low speeds in these point-to-point -point events like we were, we're going to today. And then obviously at high speeds, we'll reduce or eliminate the feedback altogether because realistically, um, tighter steering is better, especially when you're traveling at high speeds. This thing gets over 200 k's on the track. So last thing you want is a twitchy steering wheel. We're gonna check that. So once we get on the track, We'll give some um, feedback to Haltech, make sure that's all working properly. Then they'll be able to upload into the latest firmware and all you guys will be able to enjoy it for those that are doing the conversions.
Clutch is back together, the car's back together. Looking forward to giving it a, a bit of a run on the track to see how we go. If the change has made a difference to uh, ensuring the clutch doesn't slip, um, we've changed the front pads. So um, we're going more, more aggressive front pad and uh, we'll be able to see how that reacts because now we've upgraded the rear brakes. We want as much bite as we can um, so I don't keep sliding through the tires. So this thing's good to go. We still want to try to get the, the, the front splitter on next. We want to make sure we get some front aero down. We have to check the tire temps at the uh, track, make sure that we've got even contact. The lockup mark indicated that the tire wasn't potentially getting full grip. So we can maybe do some camera adjustments and check to see if there's some gains from just doing a camera alignment and just seeing if we can keep that tire a bit straighter and if that is beneficial to lose a bit of corner speed and potentially have better braking, better contact on the straight. So we'll get into that, see at the track. For now, this thing's ready to run. So we're gonna clean it up, give it a wash, get it on the trailer, and we'll see you at the track. 